My name is Alan Ricks. I'm the co-founder of Mass Design Group, a nonprofit architectural practice based in Boston, Massachusetts, and Kigali, Rwanda. And we think architecture has a responsibility to improve people's lives. And we measure that through different metrics of impact and at different scales. So at its kind of most fundamental, we have an obligation to catalyze and amplify the outcomes that are the, of the core services that are delivered in our buildings. So whether that's health or education or quality housing. But then what we think about is how can we leverage the building process to expand that impact to the community that's served, to the region. And we think about that through kind of what, what we call our four E's, the economy, the environment, education, and emotion. And I, I mean, I think we talk a lot about the kind of environmental impacts, and so I, I won't kind of dwell on that. Economic is, is fairly straightforward. How can the, the significant funding that goes into capital projects remain within the communities that they're built. So that means the, the materials that are bought come from the region. The, the people that are employed on these jobs are from there. That maximizes the economic impact. Then we have the educational impact, and that is that uh, in many of the places we're working in emerging economies, there's an opportunity to uh, build capacity through the building process. That's whether that's uh, developing kind of new guilds of craftsmen or training architects and engineers that then can go on to kind of scale that impact. And then finally we talk about the emotional impact of buildings and this is where you know, beauty really comes into play. You know, when, when people think buildings are beautiful, when people love them, they take care of them and that's one of the, the kind of most important aspects of sustainability. You know, I was talking about how, how do we leverage the building process to expand the impact and and we've kind of taken to calling that low fab or locally fabricated. And uh, it, it doesn't mean low tech, it doesn't mean not prefab, it just means that we're uncovering what the available resources are where we work and leveraging them to deliver value. And that means trying to find locally available materials and locally available skilled artisans and craftsmen and workers to develop highly customized but contextual solutions. So in one case on our cholera center in Haiti, we worked with Nathan King and a, a, a group of designers that have developed uh, really high-tech solutions for, for example, for the solar decathlon, where you're using uh, computation to optimize the apertures for things like daylight uh, and privacy and then fabricating it using robots. And we said, how can we actually leverage the best things about that, the, the high-tech solutions that are creating better outcomes, and how can we deploy that in a place like Port-au-Prince, Haiti? And in Haiti, where there's these am amazing kind of culture of metal workers and, and artists, we found a, a kind of house, an atelier of artists that were willing to work with us. And so we created kind of one-to-one -one scale uh, diagrams and jigs for them to use where they're able to to deliver the same kind of 26,000 different cuts but all done by hand so in in Haiti for example after the earthquake in 2010 and only you know four cents on the dollar actually stayed within within Haitian businesses most of the kind of aid funding stays within the donor nations and so this is a perfect example of that. Instead of importing a solution, we imported an idea and then we're able to manufacture it locally. And so that means that they're gaining new skills. Guys that were making street art now working at the kind of architectural scale, uh, seeing it have a kind of impact in the, their own community and delivering something really beautiful as well.